Hey sis, I wanna give you five steps to take to help you get back into your fitness routine or maybe you need to get into a fitness routine for the first time ever. And I wanna encourage you in that even if you have found yourself and realized that you have your self-care has taken a back burner, chances are you are found me because you are also a highly driven, successful Christian entrepreneur or executive. And maybe like many of the clients that I work with, you are continually looking at how to balance in the self-care because you already know that we can't give what we don't have. And so you already know that in order to experience all that God has for you, in order to be all God wants you to be, in order to do all that God wants you to do, that unique call and purpose on your life that only you can give, in order for you to do that to the best of your potential, you already know that it starts with you, that you're the operator, that you are the person that gets to show up in such a powerful and strong and dynamic way that you are that woman. You are embodying the essence of who he's called you to be so you can do the things he's called you to do. And yet it's easy to get caught up in the busyness or the drive or the mission and let our own self-care take kind of a back seat. And if that's been you lately, then I wanna tell you that that was me lately too. And these five things are the simple things that helped me get back on track, get back into momentum, and get back to that level of certainty and expectation and that level of performance. Because for us, it's not a matter of starting from ground zero, it's a matter of continually looking at how do I get the most out of my energy? How do I get the most out of my day? How do I get most out of what I'm called to do while being the wife or the mom or like all of that is part of it. And yet you've got either a business or you're helping someone out. You're their person helping them run their business and all of the things get to work together. And unfortunately, sometimes we are the last, we lose sight of the importance of the foundation of our own self-care. That was me recently and I didn't even really realize it. I wouldn't say that I had lost sight of my own self-care. I had unknowingly lowered the bar of my own self-care. And I'm gonna share with you what happened to me because if you follow me for any length of time, it might be shocking for you to hear. You're probably thinking like, Rebecca, you've been a fitness coach for over a decade. You have your own transformation from two decades ago. You live and breathe this stuff. What do you mean you got off track? How does that even happen? What does that mean for me? And I think, by sharing what recent, my most recent experience was, I'm far from perfect, perfect, first of all, but my most recent experience where I really kind of fell out of routine and out of a, the pattern that helps create the best version of me will help you see how it can be so deceptive when we start to fall out of patterns and when we start to go down what I call a slippery slope. And I tell my clients all the time, slippery slope is slippery because before you know it, you're at the bottom and you didn't even realize that you were moving backwards, right? And not bottom from the standpoint of crying in my Cheerios or anything of that imagination, but just not the best version of me. So what took place for me was that I had a significant back injury a year ago and the back injury was so significant. It was in a lot of pain um, for the initial stint of it. And so I was physically forced to take time out of my workouts. And for me, in this stage of my journey, as I'm sure it might be true for you as well, the physical exertion isn't just about having a body that I feel amazing in and feel comfortable and radiant, confident in. It is the, the physical release in a workout is also a fuel for my mental health. It's also fuel for being able to access God's creativity in me. It's also fuel for me to be able to access God's wi wisdom and vision and peace, like a physical exertion for me. I really believe God created a lot of us high performers as the physical release of a workout that is gonna challenge us is like a release valve, right? It, it is one of the keys to the kingdom, not to be sacrilegious or whatever you wanna call it, but like that, it, those are the words that I have to describe it in this moment. It's a key that unlocks so much and so many other things when we are physically taking care of ourselves through, through good sleep, through water intake, through 
um, proper stress management through uh, creating emotional mastery by being able to identify the thoughts that don't serve us and uh, replacing them with the, word, the thoughts that do. These are all things that I live and breathe and I'm honored to walk alongside of high performing Christian women to help them integrate it into really busy lifestyles. So I live and breathe this and yet this is what was hope, no, what was true for me, and then I will share the five things I did to get back to feeling like I, I'm back to me, right? And or on my way to the next version of me. And what took place for me was that back injury forced me to physically come out of habit, forced me to physically come out of the routine of getting some sort of movement in, usually a challenging workout, almost every day. I'm not saying that you have to work out like a bungee and six, seven days and, and what have you. I just, this is one of the things that drives me. So it's a critical piece of my puzzle. Your puzzle might be different. And that's where you working with a coach, whether it's me or somebody else is powerful because your puzzle, what helps you operate at your best is going to look slightly different. There's going to be commonalities and then there's going to be slight differences to you, what makes you perform at your best, what equips and empowers, I should say, to, to equips and empowers you to perform at your best because you're different, because you're uniquely crafted by God to be wired differently, to do different things, to be different person. Like you are a special snowflake. You are a fingerprint. You are uniquely desired. So what I know, there's, there's core tenets for all of us and then there's iterations or modifications within it, if that makes sense. For me, a physical workout five days a week has been a core tenet of my puzzle that equips and empowers me to look and feel my best for almost two decades. But having the back injury pull it, that piece of the puzzle, I realized in hindsight, not only got pulled out, but it got tucked away. It's like that corner piece you can never seem to find, right? I'm not sure that that's a great analogy, but that's what's coming to mind. And I didn't realize what was happening because I was on a slippery slope. And what I expressed to my clients is slippery slopes are super dangerous because before you know it, you're at the bottom. Before you know it, you're at a place where you don't want to be. And because we are wired the way we are, it really takes awareness and a few adjustments. It doesn't have to be this huge drama. It doesn't have to be dump. That's just not even our thing. But it takes the awareness and knowing the right few things to adjust to get back on top of the mountain, right? And that's what it was about for me. When I took time off for the physical, the habit of being in a workout every day, what I didn't realize was that the busyness, because I love what I get to do, and for other reasons I'm sure too, but the busyness started to fill that void, started to fill that space, so that even as I was rehabbing my body and slowly getting back to the point where I could do physical workouts again and I could start traveling, challenging myself physically again, right? I was smart about it. And so that time, understandably, should have it did take time but even once i got to the point where I, I still wasn't choosing to because i had normalized not showing up for myself in that way every single day and i believe maybe there's some justification going on so i'm sure a lot of different things however what i came to realize about two months ago now was that this pattern had taken place that i had normalized not being in the gym every day that I, I got to remember that when I'm in the gym, because this is such a critical piece of my puzzle, doesn't need to be part of your puzzle, you can apply this, you can use this outline for putting your puzzle together and figure out what piece might be missing or what piece you need to find, you get the point. So once I realized these are the five things that I did, because I know that it's an important piece of my puzzle, excuse me as I stumble over my words for a second, because I know it's an important piece of my puzzle, I know that getting that piece back in place is necessary in order for me to continue to be all that God has called me to be so that I can do all that he has called me to do. We know that we're created on purpose for unique and greater purpose. You know that you're uniquely gifted, uniquely talented. You have an anointing and a call on your life that only you can give. So if you don't step up and step into it on a continual basis, then it just does not get done. The world will be left without the peace that you were meant to add. Your family will be left without the peace that you are meant to be to add, right? And again, it's not to the extent of whether you're present or not present, it's stepping into the fullness of what God has for you, the fullness of what he has called you to do. And 
in order to do that, I know God has told me, and based on his biblical truths, that we get to put God first, but ourselves second. Love your neighbor as you loving yourself. His word also talks about the fact that our physical body is his temple. It is the home for his Holy Spirit in us. He talks about disciplining our body. He talks about all of these principles that I'm not meant to go into today because that is the framework. God doesn't care whether or not you have six pack abs, but having a healthy, fit, and strong body, not buying into the lies of society that are amplified by Satan that say that self care is selfish or that you're healthy at any weight. All of that could not be further from the truth, but it's amplified because as much as God has amazing plans for you, the enemy has a plan to deter, distract, and discourage you as well. And he knows that he can fly under the radar and get at you from the perspective of your own self-care, your health, your well-being, then that is just enough to hinder your race, but not enough to make you obviously overtly aware that it is a combination of our own stinking thinking, societal norms, and things that Satan himself is amplifying. So he will continually work in and around you to try and sabotage your own self-care or your thought around your self-care and yourself in your center of well-being. Because he knows that when you are truly at your best, it's directly correlated, the level in which you are strong and fierce in mind, body, and spirit is the level in which you are going to be able to show up for yourself to the fullness of what God wants you to be experiencing, being as a woman, and then giving in service to others in a way that honors God. So coming back to full circle, realizing that I myself had done this, had been guilty of it, had let the enemy, like whatever it might be, whether it was me or normalizing it with the people around me, whatever it was, I just know that I was in a spot where I was still working out, still showing up, still at a reasonable weight because I have learned how to eat what I want when I want without gaining weight, but a little smushier than I have been in years past. Uh, and so it became normalized, but it is not the best version of me. It's not everything that it's not the standard in which I know I want to hold myself accountable for. So how did I catch myself? is going to be unique for each and every one of us. What I did about it is five things that you can do too. So for me, I knew that being consistent in physical workouts is a major driver for all other things and how I'm showing up and how I'm being as I'm showing up, how I'm managing stress, anxiety, how I'm believing in bigger visions, how I'm executing on a daily basis, how I'm showing up as a wife, as a mom, as a friend, as a coach. And so therefore, when I realized that I had fallen off track, I realized the importance of getting back on track. So the first thing was recognition and awareness. The second, and these are actually the five things that make it practical and what you can start doing right away, is setting yourself up for success, whatever it is for you. I'm gonna use workouts as an analogy. Maybe for you, you need to get back to your quiet time with God. Maybe for you, it's that you get to add in healthy foods. Maybe you've fallen into a habit of driving, uh, yeah, going through the drive through on the way home or ordering Uber Eats and, and not from the healthiest of places or, or fast or convenient. And you know that when you eat like that, you feel like the word I use, you eat crappy food, you're going to feel crappy, right? Excuse the French, but the whole, like, that's a whole other story. It fits your macros. When you eat crappy food, you will feel crappy. So if maybe it's you get to level up the quality of foods that you're consuming, whatever it is, this is how you apply. This is what worked for me. And that is, first of all, for me, I decided what is the habit that I get to change? What is the habit that I need to put back into place? And I set a consistency challenge for me. So what I mean by that is for me, knowing that workouts are my thing that I get to add back in and or be more consistent in, I set a consistency challenge of 40 days of consistent workouts. No excuses, no justification, get back to making it non-negotiable for 40 days. I'm not saying that you have to work out every single day to be healthy and fit. You definitely don't have to do that. You definitely do not have to spend hours at a gym. I'm saying for me, I know that um, workouts were my thing that I wanted to, to build back in. And I know that it is easier to create momentum if you can pick 
a, something that you can do on a daily basis for a period of time. Some like studies say 21 days, some say 56. I choose 40 because it worked for Jesus, to be quite honest. There's no, there might be science behind the 21 days, some say 56 days, whatever the case may be. 40 days work for Jesus, 40 days is what I chose to do. And it's a thing for me. So I set the goal of 40 days consistent workouts. After the 40 days, if I feel like it's gonna be five days a week or six days a week at this season in life, that's okay. But 40 days to regroup, refocus, recommit to myself, right? The second thing is I pulled up a picture. Now, this could be a picture of a time where you looked and felt your best. It could be a picture of, so for me, it was a picture of, of a, a physical representation where I was physically at one of the best stages in my life. But even then, can I tell you that the picture I brought up wasn't even about the body I had at the time. It was a reflection of who I became to achieve that who that who I was embodying during that time. And so let me come back to that for a second and let me share with you here, whether it's a picture of yourself or a picture of somebody else, or maybe it's a picture of a vacation or a picture of, I don't, maybe you, you need to work on some money habits and it's a picture of a bank account number, whatever it might be. The picture is a visual representation. So this comes into play most when you're looking at a physical body. Don't compare, don't use it to think of what it, it to be the representation. So for me, my own picture was a representation of the discipline, of the commitment. When I first got fit, ladies, side note, for those of you that maybe feel like you don't have time, when I first went from being overweight, uncomfortable in my body, all, all of the things, I was working a corporate job 50, 60 hours a week. I was a single mom, fully responsible for my son. How I did all those other things is for another day, but I'm telling you, you can make it happen no matter where you're at, no matter what stage of life. You just need to decide that you want to and get the right resources and the right people aligned with you. That's a bonus. Now, having said that, that picture represented that determination, that decision to get healthy and fit because even back then 20 years ago God switched something in me where I knew as great as I thought I was doing at the time how much better would I be if I actually felt good if I actually did the things if I was truly showing up all of those things and so that picture was the end result of about an 18 month commitment of doing the thing that would be required to get myself in a place where I was physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually strong. And so that's what that picture represented. So that picture, so maybe it's a picture of you when you had a season where you felt like you were at your best. Maybe it's a picture that of somebody else that represents the, the, the character, the embodiment of who you want to become. Again, not by comparison, but just the embodiment of what is possible, super important distinction. Whatever that picture is, put it as your screensaver on your phone. And you might be thinking, because the thought happened to me too, what if somebody else looks at my phone, because here's a picture and I'm not quite in a bathing suit, but I'm in like a, a sports bra top and a pair of shorts. And it's just, you know, the thought that I had, that I'll be super transparent, is like somebody looks at my phone, they're going to be thinking, why does she have a picture of herself? But here's the thing. Do I care about somebody else's opinion? and fleeting thought, or do I care more about the result and becoming the type of woman that makes those choices again? For me, hands down, I care more about being the woman that makes those choices again than I do about somebody else's opinion that might see the picture on my phone. Fair enough? So when you see that picture, you're reminding yourself, this is who I am, not who I'm working towards, not who I'm going to be, this is who I am. You, you step into your identity, your thoughts and your emotions will catch up. So that was the second thing. The third thing, using this as an example, for me, I knew that morning workouts are best for me. It's when I'm most likely to be consistent. And so in order to set myself up for success, everything I might need that next morning, I put together the night before. So whatever, even if it's you're getting back into your quiet time, make sure that your space is set up the night before so that in the morning, you're just in movement. You're just in action. You're not thinking about what to wear or what to grab or what to set up. You, it's all already done, ready to go for you. Uh, let's see. Third is talking yourself into it. So I shared the other day that 
a thought this morning as soon as my alarm went off. Sometimes I wake up before my alarm, but my alarm went off and immediately I thought, get up, take action. You do not procrastinate. This is who you are. A month ago when I first started this this started this routine again that had was not yet my automated thoughts were still do I really want to get up this more this early and do this right now because I my uh, I'm still getting my sleep but I had to shift my schedule my a.m. time was 6 a.m. before I added workouts back in so it was a process you get the same superpower you have of talking yourself out of things you get to use to talk yourself into it and one of the ways you can do that is think not about the need to get out of bed but how you're gonna feel after the thing is done one of my clients just today shared how great she felt this morning because she didn't want to work out today and yet she chose to do it anyway there's even more power and more affirmation for ourselves when we choose to do the thing even when we don't want to. So it may start with your automated thought might be something like trying to talk yourself out of it. Catch the thought, talk yourself into it. Think about the end result. Think about the benefit. Think about the reward. Think about how much better you will feel or think about how crappy you're gonna feel if you don't show up for yourself, right? Uh, and then let's see, I'm looking at my notes real quick. The last but not least, the fifth is holding yourself accountable. Now here's a little tough love. We are far more likely to keep our word to other people than we will to ourselves. Keeping your word to yourself is by far the most important word you could ever do. That's what helps build and secure and grow and evolve your confidence and your self-worth is keeping your word to yourself. However, that is a process and you may not be there yet. So holding yourself accountable to somebody else may be more powerful for you in this moment because you may be in a place where you're still more likely to keep your word to somebody else than you are to yourself. Here's another two tough, tough love for you. So I'm warning you, I'm a truth loving coach spoken from a lens of love, but the truth is the only way that you can truly create shifts that are going to be meaningful and powerful. So here's the powerful truth. You cannot hold yourself accountable that it, to somebody for the habit you want to grow in that doesn't hold that habit to the standard you want to be at or higher. You cannot hold yourself accountable to somebody that does not hold the standard you are trying to set or higher. So you cannot hold yourself accountable using fitness as an example to a person that is not yet at the fitness level or above the fitness level in which you want to be. Because one, you don't truly respect their opinion because they haven't achieved what it is you want to achieve. And two, like I've said to women many, many times, the buddy system works until the buddy, buddy system falls apart. It's blind leading the blind. The buddy has an off day, doesn't keep their word, comes up with something that feels like a valid reason as to why they're not gonna do something, and it plants a seed for the other buddy to do the same the next time they don't feel like it. So you get to choose to hold yourself accountable, typically to a mentor or a coach, somebody that is at further along for that specific aspect in which you are trying to add back in into which you're trying to grow cultivate so those are the five things the first setting some sort of habit goal and creating a consistency challenge in that habit for the goal the second thing is pulling up a picture that is going to represent who you want to become and who you want to embody for that habit that you're adopting the third is getting ready for the habit that you're building the night before, the day before, so that everything is ready to go when you plan to be in action for that habit. The fourth is talking yourself into it. In the beginning, you're going to have to talk yourself into it every time you catch yourself trying to talk yourself out of it. Eventually, the thoughts will catch up and the automated empowered thoughts will start to come back. Last but not least, hold yourself accountable to somebody that you respect in high regard for that same thing either a coach, a mentor, that's typically who's going to be able to hold space for that as you're working out. So as always, I love you guys. If this was helpful, please like, comment, share, follow, and I will be sharing more of this based on what I know works, make, makes a difference for you. And if you are uh, have any questions or comments, feel free to comment below. Or you can email me at Rebecca at RebeccaTowert.com. Love you guys. Bye for now.